Mankind has always been obsessed with the human face, and obsessed with capturing it in various mediums. From ancient statues and hieroglyphs, to Greco-Roman funerary mosaics, to Renaissance paintings and sculptures, photography and film, and into the modern era, handcrafted computer-generated portraits. But wait, how can computer-generated art qualify as handmade? Doesn't the computer do most of the work for you? Well, some tools are designed to do most of the work, but that's not really creating a portrait any more than assembling an IKEA table is considered carpentry. In fact, most computer-generated art, including portraits, is custom and in a very real sense built from scratch. So in this video, I want to pull back the curtain on my scratch-made 3D portraiture workflow. Hi, my name is Kent Trammell. I am a digital artist and Blender instructor for CGCookie.com. I've been creating computer-generated art for over 20 years, often specializing in human characters. So if you've ever wondered how those shockingly realistic CGI faces are created from scratch, you're watching the right video. First, I'm going to fire up Blender, a free open source 3D creation suite, and then add a ball of digital clay to begin digitally sculpting which is really not that different from sculpting physically. We have tools to simulate real world techniques. It's up to us to form proper shapes. Our hands even get a little sticky, except we do get symmetry for free and can undo our mistakes. Uh, but let's get back to the human face, which is quite a complex shape to achieve. And as with anything complex, it helps to start with a simplified version that we can gradually refine. In the case of portraits, this geometric simplification is commonly referred to as planes of the face. And this stage can even adhere to a step-by-step -step formula of sorts, similar to Andrew Loomis's method for drawing the human head. Once our head is blocked out and resembling an Oscar statue, we can smooth out the geometric shapes and begin refining facial features, like the mouth, the nose, the eyes, the ears, etc. Another key goal of the simplified blockout is to establish correct general proportions so the refinement of each facial feature fits this solid proportional foundation. I think it's wise to focus on each feature individually because the face as a whole can be overwhelming, but each feature by itself is much more digestible. At this point, we have a head that's about 75% complete. All major features are refined and believable, but it's still lacking fine details like skin pores, wrinkles, and blemishes. To achieve such detail, we need to subdivide our model into the tens of millions of polygons. Think of it like increasing the resolution of an image, more pixels for more detail. In this case, we need more polygons for more detail. Only when we have a significantly higher model resolution can we stamp various pore and wrinkle details to achieve a high fidelity skin surface. And after what feels like a million hand placed stamps, voila, we have a realistic, fully detailed bust completing the modeling phase of the project. That is if we want a naked portrait. If we're not going for naked, then we need to switch gears and model things like eyes, which we kind of need anyway, but also accessories and clothing. While the face is certainly the main quest in a portrait project, we cannot neglect these side quests. They deserve the same level of attention and craftsmanship. Nothing against naked portraits, but clothing and accessories usually make these things more interesting by injecting elements of personality and narrative. At this point, we have a 100% complete portrait model. However, a gray model is boring and kind of strange for anyone that isn't an avid 3D modeler. And frankly, I want to show my mom this render when we're done, so let's move on to texturing, which is essentially to paint our models with color along with introducing material properties like reflection and translucence. I like to start this stage by extracting geometric information from the sculpture itself. This is called texture baking. Various baking algorithms will capture all of our fine details as images in a variety of ways for layering on top of a simple color foundation, which can easily be painted by hand. 
All of these textures can then be modified to control those material parameters like reflectivity and translucence. It's important to understand that color and material properties must work together like a carefully choreographed boy band number if we want to achieve a believable level of realism. And there we have it, a finished skin material. Perhaps it's an acquired taste, but a good skin material is like a fine wine. Like you could touch it or pinch it. Or uh, anyway, once again, we cannot neglect our side quests. Eyes, accessories, and clothing need their textures and materials as well. This is also where we get to implement another crucial component of portraiture, and that's hair. Similar to a chia pet, we can grow, comb, and manipulate hundreds of thousands of digital hair follicles to achieve believable beards, eyebrows, eyelashes, and scalp hair. Thankfully, we don't have to address each hair follicle individually, but rather we're controlling a small number of parent hairs, which propagate their properties to their many children hairs. And after a delicate dance of styling, dialing in parameters, and finessing materials, we arrive at believable digital hair. We can also use this hair system to achieve a layer of fuzz on our clothing. Neat! And guess what? We are finally almost done. Right now we just have a completed 3D asset that exists inside Blender, but it's not really something finished that can be shared online to impress our social media following. For that, we really need to showcase our portrait in the best light, which we call rendering. This is where we can add light objects to mimic portrait photography, or use these nifty things called HDRI environment textures, which serve to capture a full 3D world or room as an image, which can even cast light due to their high dynamic range. And finally, with our portrait lit to perfection, the only thing left to do is let it render into glorious images and or videos of our masterpiece. Just prepare to be, you know, patient as it does that. And so as you've witnessed, creating CG portraits from scratch is quite an involved, artistic, technical, and deeply rewarding process. While there are definitely bonuses to working digitally, there's also no shortage of handmade craftsmanship. If you want to try your hand at creating 3D portraiture or characters, you can download Blender today for free, no strings attached, and begin your creative journey. Also, all the footage in this video comes from an extremely in-depth tutorial course if you're interested in taking a deeper dive. It's called Human, and it's available through a cgcookie.com membership or as a standalone purchase from the Blender Market. Again, my name is Kent Trammell. Thank you for watching.